70s. Of course, there is also throughout this great crowd here, you, sometimes you'll find ways that crowds try to entertain themselves, you know? I mean, sometimes they'll start the wave, and a lot of times this is sort of a mindless thing. But this wave that we see at Iowa is something that has great meaning and connotation. We saw it. Uh, we saw it last week. Kinnick Stadium is right beside the Children's Hospital at the University of Iowa. So at the end of the first quarter, they're turning around and making sure that all of these kids know that they're with them. A different kind of wave that is very touching, Tom Rinaldi. Well, Reese, tradition in college football is part of the sport's very DNA. But tradition usually takes time. It happens generation over generation. The best new tradition in this sport has happened fast, thanks to some fans on the Facebook page, Hawkeye Heaven, who made a suggestion that all the fans at Kinnick Stadium should not only salute the players, but that special group of people watching from across the street. And with that, much more than a wave was born. They came to the 12th floor for a gesture or a motion or a sign, but they received something more, a moment. It's almost like a wave of hope, like you're not in this on your own. It's a salute to those kids and to their, their parents and the family members. It just kind of brings it all home, what is important. It started September 2nd. It's time to start a new tradition. tradition where Iowa fans at the end of the first quarter turn away from the field at Kinnick Stadium and wave to those watching from across the street. Patients looking down from the Stead Family Children's Hospital. One of the faces they might see in those windows was Daxon Fippen, 17 years old, fighting to recover from cranial surgery. Even during the whole surgery, I was super calm. I thought he's going to go in, he's going to come out. And then he came out and he couldn't dress, he couldn't get out of bed, he couldn't use his hands, and I had a lot of fear. A few days later, with Daxon now conscious but his recovery slow, he found motivation in thinking of the view from those windows. He was super discouraged that day. And then he looked out the window and he said, at least Saturday's coming. <laughs> and then he just snapped right out of it. Being able to have that game to look forward to all week, that definitely helped with being able to make the days go by a little bit faster and easier, I guess. Do you see the letter I for Iowa? I-O-W-A. In another window, Fans might have seen four-year-old Sam Davidson and his mother, Courtney. What they couldn't see was Sam's battle against a brain tumor and his cycles of chemotherapy. I don't think he understands the word cancer, and so we haven't really used that a whole lot. The chemotherapy is four, four or five days, and then we receive his stem cells, and then we recover, waiting for his blood counts to come up, and that's four cycles of that. All right, here we go. Oh, great job. But on a fall Saturday, it isn't about radiation or IVs. It's about celebration and anticipation. For all that he's endured and gone through, Sam wanted to find a spot right up front. It was pretty cool. Sam might not know it, but he means more to Iowa's head coach than he could ever imagine. This is a tough subject for me. Nobody plans on a visit to the kids' hospital. It's just, it's, it's not something you schedule or want to go through. The Ferentz family has been through it. In 2014, Kirk and Mary Ferentz lost their granddaughter, Savvy, who was born prematurely at Iowa Children's at just over 21 weeks. We knew it, it was too early. You try to stop labor, but they were unable to. Savvy was born and um, she survived for two days. And to see my son and daughter-in-law in such pain, and um, it couldn't do anything, couldn't do anything for it. That was probably the lowest moment. 
This past summer, Kirk and Mary made a million dollar donation to the hospital to create a program in neonatal research. After talking with Savvy's mother, Nikki, the family named the program in the baby's honor. The next couple of questions, Kirk, are hard yep. because they revolve around the origin of the donation. It's been a couple of years, and, um, you know, there'll always be an empty spot where Savvy was supposed to be. I mean, she's very much a part of our family, a part of our life. And I think the best thing was when I talked to Nikki. She goes, our biggest fear is that Savvy's memory will dim, and now it won't. So... When 70,000 turn away from the field and toward the windows, when they raise their arms and move their hands, it's a moment, and it means more than we know. You see it, and and the flood of people looking back at you, it was more emotional than anything, realizing that they were thinking about us. To me, it's just such a nice way for 70,000 people to recognize some really special people. The real heroes are up there. It's more than just a wave. <laughs> it's a lot more. It's life-changing for all of the patients here. As we said, Iowa is not playing at Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeyes are on the road, taking on Michigan State later this afternoon. There will be no players on the field. Kinnick Stadium will be empty. But on behalf of every college football fan, from here in Blacksburg and across the country, on behalf of College Game Day, right now, for all those who are still in that hospital, there's your wave from all of us at College Game Day, all of us who send our support, our strength, and our spirit to the real heroes. Reese? Tom, we echo that as well. Our way from all of us here at College Game Day to all of those kids at the Iowa Children's Hospital. Back with more Game Day in a bit.